Here are five advanced tips to help you assess if your business is trending in the right direction. I'm Eleanor Beaton and I help women founders scale from 200K to 2 million plus. And I'm on a mission to make this YouTube channel, the one you're watching right now, be the world's number one resource for high growth women founders. So if you like what you see, hit subscribe, click the bell and let's dive in. Let's start with why I even need to make this video in the first place. Shouldn't it be obvious if your business is trending in the right direction? Well, I will tell you after being an entrepreneur myself for over 20 years, and coaching hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs, it's not always as simple as you might think to understand, hey, is this business moving where I want it to go? Here's why. So first of all, there are four core reasons why it's sometimes a little challenging to figure out if your business is moving in the right direction. So reason number one is delayed accounting. So typically as a business owner, you could be waiting a month, sometimes even multiple months to get up to date books from your bookkeeping team. And so that means that you don't actually see the full picture of what what happened in your business one month until like three or four months down the road, possibly. Even more than that, accounting is delayed by nature. It's always giving you a picture of past performance of your business, not how your business is actually doing today. So for that reason, sometimes de the delay factor of accounting can make it hard to tell if your business is trending in the right direction. The second reason that it can sometimes be hard to tell if your business is trending in the right direction is because you're optimizing for the wrong things. I see this all the time in marketing marketing. So for instance, I have worked with lots of entrepreneurs who maybe sell high ticket boutique style services, and they're optimizing their marketing and their social media for views. So they're trying to create social content that gets them tons and tons and tons of views because they're optimizing for the kinds of things that an influencer might optimize. What they forget is that they actually work with very, very targeted clients. So they don't want to optimize their marketing for views. They want to optimize their their marketing for, let's say, sales calls or business development meetings. When you optimize for the wrong things, it can look like your business is trending in the right direction, but that information is actually irrelevant and you may be actually trending in the wrong direction. The third reason is simply entrepreneurial impatience. I remember Tony Robbins saying that entrepreneurs routinely overestimate what they can get done in a day and underestimate what they can get done in a decade. What does this mean? It can sometimes mean that you may not have patience in executing long term strategies because you want them to pay off right away. So you abandon things just when they would have started working for you. I've done that. I admit it. And then the fourth reason it can sometimes be hard is something called the hedonic treadmill. And what this means is that every time your business grows and you hit a new level, that kind of becomes your new normal, right? And so you just keep adjusting and acclimatizing to your new level. You see it as normal. You don't realize that growth has been happening. So those are the four reasons why it can sometimes be actually a little tricky to tell if your business is trending in the right direction. And if I missed something, if there's another reason that you have found it's hard to tell, definitely let me know in the comments also. All right, so now we know why it's hard to tell. Let's talk through five advanced tips that you as a CEO can keep your finger on the pulse of these five things regularly. You are gonna get a very clear picture if your business is moving in the right direction or not. Let's dive in. Item number one, you wanna choose one to three different lead generation indicators and track them weekly and measure are they going up. What do I mean by that? So first of all, you're going to have to think about where do most of your customers or clients come from? So for example, if they typically come from speaking opportunities or networking events, then one of the things that you are going to need to start monitoring is how many speaking events are you pitching yourselves to? How many podcasts are you guesting on? So if you get clients or customers through speaking, you're gonna to need to track how many speaking engagements you are doing on a regular basis. For somebody like Safi Media, that's my company, we do a lot of lead generation work through organic content marketing. So we're gonna take a look at, hey, what's happening with our weekly podcast downloads, what's happening with our weekly YouTube subscribers, what's happening with our weekly social platforms, are we increasing our total number of followers? Are we increasing our total amount of engagement? So what I recommend is you think about where do my clients come from? You really do the work of identifying the top one to three places. And then for each of those, you choose one indicator that if you, if this number 
grows or if this number holds steady or increases, then your business is going to move in the right direction. It means you're growing your front of spear lead generation. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to measure your sales pipeline. Is it holding steady and is it growing? So sales pipeline is the total volume of potential deals that you have in the tank for the course of the next month. So if you think about it, it's the total value of proposals that you've issued that are out with clients. If you do it through sales calls, it could be the total volume of potential sales with th that you have associated with qualified sales calls that are scheduled into your calendar. So sales come from sales pipeline. So the goal is that you always grow that pipeline because the sales that you close always come from the pipeline. I think about it like a fishing pond. The fish that you catch, those are your sales. The fish that you stock into the pond, that's your sales pipeline. So really measuring your sales pipeline, tracking it weekly is the next thing you wanna do to see if your business is moving in the right direction. Number three, measure your total number of active clients and ask yourself, is this total of number of active clients holding steady or increasing? And you wanna measure the total number of active clients you're currently serving in your business on a weekly basis. And the goal is to move that number up. Now, depending on your business model, you might be moving it up by like one customer a week, one customer a month, or for you, it's about adding hundreds of customers a week and thousands of customers a month. It's gonna completely depend on your business model, but the key is you want to be increasing your number of active customers. Number four, measure and monitor your monthly revenue gap. So for each month, you're going to have a rough target of how much income you want to be generating. So you kind of set that target. If you have any monthly recurring revenue, you figure out how much that is. So let's say you want to generate $10,000 for the month, and then you have $4,000 that's coming in for the clients you've signed, that means you have a $6,000 revenue gap. And that is the gap. You're going to be looking at that revenue gap day after day, week after week on a monthly basis and making sure that you are closing that revenue gap. The key is that, you're look, that you identify it as a gap, you figure out how much you need to sell, and you are looking at it daily. And then the fifth one is simply to compare last month's financial performance, your revenue and your profit, and compare it to the same point last year, 12 months ago. This can also give you a powerful indicator. Now, there are so many other things that we can be doing. You definitely want to be taking a look at things like profitability. But again, the place where we really look at profitability is typically historically. So it's when you get your books in from your bookkeeper or accountant, and you're looking at those and you're looking at historic performance, and that's going to help you make decisions for the future. But as far as is my business growing and is it trending in the right direction, these five advanced tips, if you put these on a spreadsheet, you monitor them on a daily or weekly basis, you are going to naturally start pushing down on the growth levers that create tremendous momentum and success in your business. Hope you found this helpful. So for more strategies, you may want to subscribe to the Woman Owned Newsletter. It is the world's only newsletter delivering hardcore growth tactics for women entrepreneurs scaling from 200K to 2 million plus. Definitely give me a thumbs up if you found this valuable and for any additional insights, questions, if there's content that you'd like me to probe even further, definitely let us know in the comments. I read everyone and we pay a ton of attention to them. And finally, if you are a woman entrepreneur, you are actively scaling from 200K to 2 million plus, and you want help from me and my team, definitely click the link in the description to book a 15 minute growth audit with my team. We'll be able to tell in about 10 or 15 minutes if we can actually help you move the needle. Definitely book that call.